Hey rollers, do you remember back to when you were 15 years old? Hanging out, goofing around with your friends, trying to look cool, cleaning up in the adult division of a jiu-jitsu tournament. Wait, what? My opponent in this absolute division match was only 15, but he was already competing at a high level. I was 45 at the time, so I'd be considered on the other side of the age spectrum. Still, age is just a number, and I'm just as young as I ever was. You, sir, are in denial. You are so in denial right now. I'm in denial. So let's get on with this classic matchup between youth, skill, agility, and speed versus I've been around the block a few times. One old and one young. Young versus old, what's better than this? <laughs> my strategy going in was to use my wily old ways and surprise him with a quick choke. I knew he was fast, skilled, and explosive, so I hoped that I had enough in the toolbox and in the tank to finish a quick sub. I was focused on the loop choke setup I had going on, so his foot sweep made me stumble around and smile my sheepish grin. His confidence on the feet was surprising, so I thought I'd better initiate my own takedown. He easily stuffed that and countered by pushing back and looking for a trip. This is when I realized I was in for a tough match. We fought for grips, he used his speed to avoid another shot, and then I went back to my first plan. I wanted to lock in a loop choke and drag him to the ground. He pushed me away as I tried to lunge forward to lock it in, and he popped his head free. We had another battle for grips, and then I got just a little too casual when I changed levels. He sprawled and then drove forward as I stood up. A quick inside trip brought me to the ground where he immediately started fighting to pass my guard. We got reset to the center of the mat and he started working on some shenanigans and tomfoolery. He was pulling to untuck my gi, I'm guessing so he could wrap it around my left arm or maybe my neck. I didn't want to lay there and find out so I started squirming and shrimping. Shrimping? is tough. I was working to get back to full guard, but he stuffed my knee, circled, and landed in my half guard once again. I had some time to contemplate some of the mistakes I had made to this point. Old or young, we all make mistakes. I tried to use my knee shield and collar grip to create some back and forth movement so I could free my right leg and stand up or hit a triangle. He used the opening to fight around to the side, leaving my legs in an awkward position. When he kicked free, he stayed briefly in side control, then hopped up for knee on belly, which I defended. He hit the turbo button, circled, and threw his leg over. This isolated my right arm, but I managed to keep my base and take top guard position. I quickly straightened my posture and thought briefly about a standing pass. My base didn't feel right, so I changed my mind. He moved close to a triple threat, guillotine, kimura, sweep, but he kept his hips tight. I saw his right arm based out behind him, so I pounced on it and pulled it across his back. Hey, give it your best shot, old timer. Finally, we were in my world. Less of a sprint, more of a stroll in the park mode. Slower, and with more time to process the next moves. I used both hands to ensure that I had a solid grip, and then I pressured to pass on his right side. Dean Lister calls this an arm behind back guard pass. Sonny Brown calls it a hammerlock guard pass. And there's a crude name for it as well. I'll let you find that on your own. Essentially, it makes you feel useless and uncomfortable. I spent far too long working for this pass. He kept his guard locked up tight, so I eventually let go and looked for some standard pass points. I tried to put my right knee to the center and use it as a wedge to open his guard, but I bailed to avoid his ankle grip. I was frustrated by just how tight he was able to maintain his closed guard. He sat up close and dug in a tight cross collar grip. Just when I thought I saw an opening to pass, he caught me off balance and swept me. I've had some luck catching triangles on this type of scramble, but in this case, my right leg was trapped and he was aware of the threat. I tried to bug his neck with a cross collar grip as a distraction so I could clear my leg. Unfortunately for me, he knew where the real danger was, so he hugged my right leg tight to secure it in place. I tried to create some movement with my hips as I looked for wrist control. I was back to my stroll in the park mode, thinking I had plenty of time to play my game. Watch the panic on my face when I look up at the clock. There was no time to clown around. I dove over for a Kimura and pulled his arm out to apply some torque. 
He tried to roll through, but I transitioned to an armbar and then back to a Kimura. I had the chance to apply an inverted triangle, but I focused on getting the angle I needed for the shoulder lock. He managed to grab his leg to defend. I at least had him concerned as the last few seconds ticked away. And that's where time ran out with my opponent ahead on points. Just like last time. Too little too late, Harry. To start with, I was embarrassed that I took a loss to such a young fella, and I kicked myself for not cranking up the heat earlier. Watching the video back though, I don't see a young punk, but a serious competitor who earned a good win and a lot of respect from me. Analyzing this match reminds me to be much more aware of the rule set, the point situation, and the time remaining. I don't often train with these things in mind, but you better believe that it is part of my pre-tournament routine now. If you enjoy my videos, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.